哒哒哒，哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒。Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Silver and Sidio. I am the only one in this world with such a name, and no one has such a name. No one has such a combination of a name. And I have a very exciting message which I just want to share. James, my man, I've got my camera director who is on this thread. James, we need to get this one into a special one. So I don't know if we're going to do it like a, I don't go with the flow or what, but we're going to do something very exciting with this one. If not, you'll have to film me and do it specially, okay? And I've got an exciting title. You may have seen the title、um, for this one. Because I always, <clears throat> Silver and Sidial, always try to find something positive out of any situation. There's always a positive message in anything. Anything, there's a positive message. Can any good come out of Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of Trump? Can any good thing come out of America? I rest my case for a second. I just want to share this for a minute, then I'll get straight into what I want to say. Rob Neal, good afternoon. Good evening. I'm so ever excited about life journeys because. The, the beautiful thing about life journey is that you learn, and when God places in you positive energy, positive drive, positive visions,、uh, positive mindset, nothing can change that. Nothing. And I'm just waiting for this to build to get some more persons on. I want people to share this. I want people to share this. Ah, stop it. I'm being bad. What are you being bad about, Velma? Ah, stop it. I'm being bad. Stop it. I'm being bad. I do a rap, rap for you. Stop it. I'm being bad. I'm being bad in the place to be. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, stop it. Stop it. I'm being bad. Velma, what are you being bad about? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Anyhow. That's much my rapping days, you know. You remember Ben, ben from school days?、Um, but this, listen, this has nothing even to do with Donald Trump. This has just got to be <coughs> about me <coughs> with an essential message for the people. Signing in from the Silburn Show, Silburn City, and Hey, I got a likes there. I got a like. Awesome. Let me get more likes. Floyd, my man. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, I am so excited. It's like I got a revelation of something which is so powerful. Through, yes, through this Donald Trump win, I saw something so powerful that will revolutionize. Revolutionize? That's a word not called. Rev- <laughs> revolutionize. The lives of someone. All right? And the central title of my simple message is this The power of the underdog. The power of the underdog. I mean, if you're in church, you want to speak in tongues, you know? The power of the underdog. The power of The resolve of a person when they say to you that you can't do it. I know, Venma, I know, I know, I know you're making fun of me. The, 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 the power, listen, you, Eva, I'm sorry, you, you get this all wrong. You think that I'm making, I'm, I'm making fun of this. I, I'm not loving this, I'm just telling you about the, the power of the underdog. 
even if the underdog was a woman, it doesn't matter to me whether it is Donald Trump or whether it was Hillary Clinton. It is the power of the underdog. The power of the reality to someone when they say you can't do it. The, the reality when they say you're not qualified. Many people have been in situations when they say you're not qualified. But God makes a way. The power of a situation whereby they say to you, you do not have the mindset. The power of the situation when you're a football team like Leicester City, whereby it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't possible. But Leicester City won. The underdog factor. Listen, as I said to you, and I'm disappointed with, with motivational, inspirational speakers. I am. Because you guys out there are spending some negative doomsday messages. Wake up and send positive messages to the people to get them to arise and wake up. I'm tired of negative messages. Listen, I got a message today from someone twice comparing Hitler with Trump. And I said to the person, listen, don't come to me with those messages. I don't want to hear it. Stop it in the track. I don't want to hear no negative message. Because my mandate is to empower, to inspire, to challenge, to take it to the next level. So I stop the person in the track. Call the person and say, listen, you don't know me. But I'm just challenging you say, don't send me ne negative messages. I don't want it. I'm not interested. I don't want to hear nothing negative. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I, that doesn't mean to say that you don't bring out negative messages. You don't share negative things which are out there which you need to correct. Don't get me wrong. But you've got one life to live. I hear this message from people saying, how can they speak to their children? But why are you speaking to your children to change a message, to correct them? What were you saying to your children to the point now you cannot speak to your children? What message were you sending to your children before? How dare you can't speak to your children to speak words of life, words of power, words of wisdom, the power of the underdog. I'm going to tell you some of the message which I heard, yeah? I've got one life to live. One dega dega life to live. And the life that I live, I'm going to make sure that I empower the lives of people with words of life, words of positive. Listen, I don't know. Maybe something is wrong with me. I don't know. Must be something is wrong with me. Because I cannot get that energy, that drive to speak doom. I can't find that words to speak words of negativity. I can't find the words to say the market is going to go in despair. I can't find the words to say that. Listen this. I can't find the words to say that. Watch and see. You watch and see in two years' time. Watch and see in one year time. You see what's going to happen in America. Why am I watching in one year time or two years time for something bad to wrong happen? Why don't I change my thought process and my thinking to make a difference in my spheres of influence? Why don't I galvanize the black community in America, in Chicago, in New York? in Connecticut, in Miami, to say, guys, listen up. Donald Trump won, yeah? We don't like that. We, we, we don't want that to happen again. So you know what we're going to do? We're not going to sit back and mope and make a lot of noise. We're going to galvanize. We are going to make a difference. 
we are going to empower ourselves by getting involved with local civic duties. We're going to become neighborhood watch coordinators. We're going to start running for the Senate. We're going to start running for Congress. We are going to tell our children to become president. Because guess what? We already had a president who is a black man, and he's still the president. President Obama, who said, yes, we can. I, 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 I fail to understand the bloody negativity. I fail to understand it. I don't understand it. I don't know where it's coming from. Where's that mindset of us black people that we have to fight each other? Listen, I got called today a house slave on my page. When I challenged a person with Sandra Brown Pinnock, the person disappeared. They blocked themselves. Coward. I challenged them. Another person called me an idiot because I, ch I said, why? Why? Other people are saying, you know, other people are saying, all the people in America, they're all crazy. They're all doom mongers. They're all negative. They all create this. They're all silly. They're all ignorant. Who are you? I had to challenge somebody to say, who are you to say that half of America don't have any sense or whatever like that? The people that spoke, that's politics, that's that demo, uh, the, the, the democratic process. It is just like Brexit. 17.5 million people voted. They are less ignorant. They never had much sense. How dare you? Who are you to say that the 17.5 million people never had any sense? Who are you? Sorry, I'm, listen, I'm challenging persons on this. I'm going to challenge persons on I'm going to challenge people to... Change your mindset. Wake up and believe that God is in charge. Now listen, let me find my, let me find my, um, I, I came with one simple message to talk about the underdog. You know, I mean, I was speaking to Gershom Allen, one of my great motivational speakers, you know. Um, I consider him a motivational speaker. You've got persons who are inspirational speakers, but I have no confidence in them right now. I'm just, you know, I have no confidence in people who are so negative. They, 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 I, I, they, I, I have... No confidence. <clears throat> and this is what I wrote this morning. I was very inspired by this. This is a lesson which I've been learning with the election campaign. And for those who are inspirational, motiv motivational speakers, need to take note of it whether you like it or not. There's always a learning curve in any situation. Always a learning curve. Always something to learn. And the first one is, Never underestimate an underdog. Never underestimate the resolve of a person with a big double H, why? Whether it bigly or not. Never understand, underestimate the fire in someone's eyes. When they resolve and they're going for it and they want to win. Right? I want to inspire you. I want to inspire you. You know, this is not about Trump or Hillary Clinton. I'm just talking about the message that I've got. Right? Because for me personally, I have no negative bones in my body to say terrible things are going to happen to America. Terrible things are going to happen to the UK. Why should I? I've got families over there. I've got children in this country. I want the best. So I'm going to speak that the, the, the best thing is going to happen to the pounds. That we're going to have a fantastic Brexit. That we're going to have a, a, a fantastic, um, the, that America is going to come together. And that the American people will challenge Donald Trump to be um, the, the, a president that is a president of all the people. Not just blue America or red America, but the United States of America. Simple as that. That's my central message. I have no negative bones in my body. Not one negative bones in my body. Right? I voted Brexit. <laughs> B R E X C. I voted Brexit. Yes, I'm a Jamaican. Yes, I'm a black man. I voted to get out of the EU. Some people don't like it, but that's their problem. But I'm not response. Unless you're my wife or you're my children or my mother or my father. Bless my, bless my father, rest in peace. Right? Now, the other thing also is this never underestimate. The power of words that grab the emotions 
and passions of a man and I'm going to go to Barack Obama. People, people are saying, I cannot put Donald Trump in the same line as Barack Obama. Well, listen, I'm going to do this now. President Trump elect President Obama in the same line. You can do anything you want to say. Nobody has any right to tell you or me how to operate and how to choose your words. Okay? The power of words. And this is what Obama used to say. Yes, we can. There's no red America. There's no blue America. We are the United States of America. There's no black America, no white America. We are the United States of America. I'm going to say that for the UK. There's no red UK, no black UK. We are the Uni Un United Kingdom. Comprising of Scotland, Northern Ireland, and all those places. We have to be positive people. We have to learn to empower and, and, and build ourselves. I posted a young black man who became a, a Republican Senate. And I said, congratulations to this man. Some people start calling him an oxymoron. Get out of here. Just because why? He's now a, a, a Republican senator? A guy could even become the president of America? Another black man? We do not have the ability to encourage and to... Listen, I get a lot of hate because of me being silver and city. I get a lot of hate for me because I'm a conservative. That's not my problem. That's your problem. Or who has a problem with that? All right? Unless you're my mother, you're my father, or my children, or my wife. Who have no problem with that. They're my greatest fans. What I'm trying to say is simply this. We have to learn how to encourage, how to empower, how to strengthen, how to edify, how to encourage, how to comfort each other at a time like this. Instead of speaking doom, speaking negative words, people are hurting. What I'm seeing on social network is hurting. People are actually living in fear. They are fearful that things are going to happen to their lives, to their jobs. The last thing they want is people coming onto them saying, things are going to bad, it's going to go crazy, blah, blah, blah. We need to speak words of life. We need to speak words of encouragement, words of power into people's lives. If you can't do that, get out of the way. And okay. And as I said to people, I'm not the person that you can send negative texts to me saying about Hitler and Trump. You know, I have no time for that. Don't waste your, your WhatsApp and your finger message sending those things to me. Makes no sense to me. Because I've got one life to live. One decade, decade life to live. And that life has got to be a life of empire. That's why I started the Silburn Show. What the Silburn Show is? Anybody who know what the Silburn Show is? The Silburn Show is a motivational, inspirational, educational, and entertaining show. It's a show where I showcase people. I showcase black people who are actually doing things, great, fantastic things. And I interview them and I find out some key nuggets about them. What inspires them? What motivates them? Something that can actually propel someone to the next level. I see some great and successful black people. I celebrate lots of black people. But at the same time, I celebrate white people. I celebrate Asian people. I celebrate all people. Because the blood that is running in our vein is actually red. I'll go further. Never underestimate the power of words that grab the emotions and the passions of a man like yes we can. And Barack Obama said it, yes we can. Trump said we will win again. People don't like to hear that. But any person who has been having a hard time, and especially if they are losing, they love to hear the words, win again. Just listen to the words, win again. Words that grab the emotion of a band. You know? Great again. Nothing is wrong with words. You may not like the messenger, but words are powerful. 
And this is, this, is, this is the one which is fantastic. This is the one which is fantastic. Never rate experience over passion and purpose. Never rate experience over passion and purpose. Many people have experience, but no passion, no purpose, no drive. Get me a man with a passion and purpose and is willing to go places and I go wonders and I do great things with him. Then a man who has experience has no drive, no passion, no energy. Right? A man, I want, there's one writer said, one motivational speaker said, and this is what a motivational speaker said. A motivational speaker said, um, what's right, what did, what did he say? If someone offer you a job and you say you can't and you can't do it, just accept the job and learn in the process of that time. Accept it and learn. What I'm trying to say is that you may go through situations in time whereby you have no experience. I've been there before. I'm, a, I'm an immigrant in the UK. Sometimes I have to blag it. Of course, I talk a lot, you know what I'm saying? You know, you, 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 you blag it. You, have, you don't have experience, but you've got to talk your way through it. You have no experience. But you got the passion and the drive and you want to. You, you, you want to actually learn. Listen, someone can see the fire in someone's eyes. That determination. That's why when people interview people, they look at them eyeball to eyeball. They look what makes them feel good. People like to have people around them that feel, makes them feel good. Not dead weight. Not negative people. Not negative energy. I hate negative energy. Right? And that's why I'm, I'm just saying this. And I'm actually throwing on a gauntlet. I'm just throwing on a gauntlet to say, don't send me negative messages about Trump and all those sort of things. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. It makes no sense coming to me. One thing I'm interested about is about how I can empower, how I can inspire my fellow black people to work together collectively and strategically and wanting to make a big difference, and how to encourage each other, how to build each other, how to recognize the fact that, hang on a second, where's the Latina vote? Where was the black vote? What happened? The reality is that the world has found out that black America is not together. And when you're not together, you're a clear target to be picked off, right? And if we're not together and strategically, you're going to find more black killing because guess what? We have not an economic base, not a power base. Okay? I'll go further. If I can find it. Finally, never underestimate the other opponent who is determined. Hillary never had the killer instinct, even though they call her Hillary. Hillary did not have the killer instinct. I don't think she wanted it. Donald Trump wanted it. I mean, I, I, listen, I watch Donald Trump messages. I watch Hillary messages, you know? Linda Petrosi, I hear what you're saying, and um, that's your call. What she's saying, Trump did not win by magic. We know that, you know? Um, Hillary won the popular vote. We know that. There are protests already happening. Protests always happens in elections. That's nothing new. Trump won because of, of the help from the KKK. Okay, rural areas and third party votes. Please stop with your condescending words. You have no clue what you are. Linda Petrosi, can I tell you this? God bless you. I don't know why you come onto my page now saying that I must stop with my condescending words. If it is condescending to you, I'm going to tell you something. Block yourself away from my page and get away and piss off, okay? Because I do not have the time for foolishness. And I'm making it very straight. I do not have the time. If you have a problem with my words, go away. Block yourself. Simple as that. I'm waiting for you to go. All right? So nobody has authority as to who can speak, okay? And, I, and I, just, I, just, I just fail to understand this. 
I fail to understand this. This is something which, 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 which messes up my mindset. When, when people actually come onto your page and are rude and out of order completely, how dare you? Anyhow, moving on. And so as I said, there's always a lesson in anything. And you may not like what I'm going to say now. And everyone has a voice. CNN has a voice. ABC has a voice. Silver and Steel has a voice. Okay? And this is to America. America, this is a wake-up call. Americans, this is your wake-up call. And this is my message. I've been watching the news and the comments since the election results, and it is indeed heartbreaking as I can sense the fear and hurt in the comments. I'm looking at families and friendship being torn apart, and the dust has not even settled yet. People are ripping themselves apart. People are not accepting the democratic process. All right? So if you guys want to actually stimulate it and fuel it, it's up to you. It's up to you. But one thing I sense that it's an American wake-up call. You guys have allowed this. You Americans have allowed this. Right? You remain passive. You're an autopilot while others are planning your future and your destiny. Never, ever should you allow this to happen again. This is your wake-up call. And when there's a wake-up call, it is not the time to moan and whine and make up noise. It is a call for action. A wake-up call as it is, the time to wake up. When somebody wake up, the first thing that they do, they get out of bed. They go to the bathroom. They wash their face or whatever like that. They are on a quest. They jump out of bed. They bathe. That is if you bathe, you know. As Jamaicans, we bathe out 55,000 times a day, you know. You get your breakfast. You're not moaning or whining. You know you have 24 hours in a day. And you will make the most of it. You work whether as an employer or self-employed. That is your wake-up call. This is a wake-up call. You don't want chump, but you must accept the reality. Right? You don't want chump, but you must accept the reality. As you have no choice. Makes no sense to run away as that won't fix the problem. And then you must strategize and organize collectively to take over. It won't happen overnight. And you must put God in the middle of it. Black persons who are worried and fearsome, that is not of God. Fear is not of God. Have no fear as Jesus is still Lord and he reigns. Right now, black America, the reality has hit home that you are not really together and you must find the answer as to why. Maybe your community leaders have failed you. Trump is not the problem. Trump was never the problem. America has a problem. Trump is a symptom of the problem. America is a problem and only you can fix it collectively. Make no sense to be a part of a problem in speaking down and dooming and ripping your country apart. What's the sense in ripping your country apart? This is my word to you, all of you. Stay blessed. And that's my message to America today. But the most important message which I want to leave today is simply this. Never underestimate the underdog. Right? You may not like it. You may not want it. You may not like the words that I speak, but I have respect. And Linda, I will encourage you to block yourself and delete yourself from my page. I found you were completely rude and out of order because you have no authority to speak on behalf of America. I'm not an American, but I give my analysis and everyone has a right to speak. You may not like it, then just walk on by, just Sing a song, sing Walk On By, Run On By, what a song by Dean Warwick or whatever like that. You know what I mean? We're too rude, man. Guys, come on. We're too rude. We're too rude. We're too rude. We're too out of order. We, we, we don't learn how to, to appreciate and to accept that there are diversity of views. You know? I will never, I never go on another person page. I go on another person page because... I have a relationship with them and I share something, you know, you know, and, and, you know, guys like Leon Green, Leon and I, sometimes we disagree, 
and I go on his page sometimes. I know when I go on his page and stuff like that. If he come on my page and he try to rip me apart, I rip him back apart. But there's a mutual respect. There's a mutual respect that we must have for each other. We must respect each other's views. You know? Whether one is a conservative, one is a, is, is a labor. I'm not a labor vote. I'm not a socialist. That's me. I believe in working. I don't believe in dole. I don't believe in handout and stuff like that. I work. Since I come to this country in 1992, I've worked. I've worked through law school, created my talk show and everything like that. By the sweat of my bro, my family, take money out of my pocket, beg nobody, nothing. All right? So therefore, what I'm trying to say is that we can do it. We as black people can do it. We can work strategically and pull things together. We can do it. But we must stop speaking down on each other. We must learn how to empower, how to edify, how to exhort, how to comfort, how to build each other, how to not go with the flow. You know? Don't go with the flow, man. Don't just keep following. Don't be like sheep to the slaughter. If something has, not, has been going on for years and it just keep happening, why you keep doing it? You know? Respect each other's views, man. Respect each other's views. We're not going to agree together. I will not agree with everybody. And you know my views. And if you send me a text or messages or whatever like that is negative, I'm going to call you and say, listen, if you get to understand who I am, I don't have a time. I've got one life to live. And not to be live in a negative zone. I'm in a positive zone, but I'll speak up on the negative issues and everything like that. Okay, guys. Got that off my chest. I just really wanted to get that off my chest today. You know, I want to love you. I want to bless you. Um, you know, may the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you grace. May he give you his mercies. And may he give you peace. And for all those persons who are hurting and believing that it's the end of the world, it is not the end of the world because guess what? Jesus Christ is still Lord. Jesus Christ is still Lord. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of all. He's the wonderful counselor. He's the Prince of Peace. Yes, I'll preach. I'll preach. Because I believe in God. And that is the drive that drives me. That is the, the essence that drives me, that propels me, that motivates me. I have no mentors. I make, make it very clear. My mentor is God. My mentor is, is the, I'm motivated from within me. Within. That's what drives me. Gershom, welcome, my man. <laughs> you know, I was speaking to Gershom Allen. That's a super motivator guy. You know what I mean? I called Gershom today and I said, Gershom, Gershom, listen, where are all these motivators out there and these inspirational speakers? They're all do mongers, man. They need to empower the people. They need to speak to the people and have life and life abundantly and, and go for it like, you know, and, and, and just take over, man. You know? But everybody's just, oh, my days, don't you know what's going to happen? The world is coming to an end. Donald Trump has won. And that's it. Come on, guys, man. We live a big God, man. God is bigger than Trump. And guess what? Ah. And this is a scripture. This is a scripture I want to leave today. I got this from someone today, and it's something I keep saying. And, and yeah, I'm going to preach a scripture. You know, in the Bible days, the people wanted a king. God said, I didn't want to give you a king. You, you know, you, you don't need a king. Oh, I want a king. <laughs> you know, I, I'm God, man. I don't want to give you a king, man. But, but they all said they want a king. So, so, so God gave them a king. And this is the word. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and set up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Daniel 2 verses 21. He changes times and seasons. And this is something I was saying to persons. You've got to understand the time and the season. You've got to be sensitive and study and show yourself approved to the time and the season. Listen, I'm not a whiz kid, but I knew and I voted for the Conservative Party to win at the last election. 
I voted for Brexit and they won. With the Donald Trump thing, I saw the writing on the wall. I saw what was happening because the wind of change was in the air. Right? And this is what this is what this is what the word of God says. He changes times and seasons. Hear that? He changes times and seasons. Due seasons always come. Something like Creflo Dollar. Due seasons always come. There's always a time where there's a new season. Right now it's winter. Uh, you know, the, uh, they said this, this November is going to be one of the coldest. He removed kings and set up kings. He removed kings and set up kings. Let's translate that down. He removed presidents and set up presidents. He removed prime ministers and set up prime ministers. He removes you and put someone else there. God is in charge. He gave wisdom to the wise. Now, what's the revelation there? He gives wisdom to the wise. A wise man doesn't mean that he knows everything, but a wise man is a man who is apt to learn and not want to know new things. When a wise man is open-minded and looking forward to something, God empowers him with wisdom. Bang! Silver. Gershom, I can see that you're open-minded. I can see that you, you want to learn new things. So I'm going to bang. You know, I'm going, to, I'm going to actually empower you with words of wisdom. And I'm going to, and, and, and because you've got understanding. Guys, that's it. That's all I have to say. That's all I have to say. And simple as this. I'm just saying my piece there. I'm just saying it as it is. I don't have the time to waste. I'm not a negative person. I'm a very positive person. And I will not tolerate and have discussions about doom America. And about doom the dollar. About doom day this. About doom day that. Why should I? There's so much negative out there, man. Let's be positive people. God bless you. And um, thank you so much for joining me. And... Uh, and those who are rude, please block yourself. There's one person I'm speaking to. Um, you know, or if you want to stay and watch on the sideline. You know, I once heard wise once said, said before he died, I'd love to learn more. Right. Let's learn more. Let's learn more. There's something to be learned every day. And even from Donald Trump, there's something to learn. I'm learning every day. And we should learn as well. God bless you and keep you, and peace out. All the best, guys. Oh, and, and before you go, before you go, just say this. Um, this is what I want to say, and this is it. The regret word is never underestimate the underdog. Never underestimate the underdog. And be wise in all things that you do. Okay? Ah, good. Gershom, all the best with your event which is coming up. Post it here as well. Tell everybody about it. And all the best. I'll get you on my show soon on the red chair and we'll talk. All right? Peace out, guys. Love you all. Awesome. Bye-bye.